Hi, everyone. This is the Chuta Bhava from Nightlight Astrology. Happy New Year again, everyone, and happy Monday. Today, we're going to take a look at Mercury's conjunction with Pluto. We're also going to take a look at Mars moving into that 29th anoretic degree of Aries. Um, the tensions of January are about to appear. They're going to, we're going to be manifesting this week as the week goes on, especially as Mars changes signs into Taurus. Um, so there's a lot to talk about. Um, I'm taking a few days off this week from creating content because I am wrapping up a lot of recordings for the Kickstarter rewards. The Kickstarter wrapped up, by the way, um, with great success. I can't thank all of you enough for pitching in and supporting my work. And for those of you who sent nice letters and prayers and all sorts of other um, really encouraging things, thank you. We ended up with 1,366 backers over 40 days. Absolutely amazing. We almost doubled last year's backer total. Um, I'm able, obviously, to support um, my staff, Kat, who you all know, Delia, who some of you know, and uh, Nanise, um, three awesome people who help me year round with all the work that I do. They're supported. Our speaker series is totally free and open to the public. We can do more scholarships um, and also start working toward building a donation based reading clinic, um, hopefully by 2022. Depends on how things go. It's a lot of work to get set up. So we have the resources to do it now, which is the main thing. It's just a matter of time. So thank you. Um, I hope that I continue to serve you in ways that are really helpful in this year ahead. I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, 2021. All right. So that being said, let's take a look at the real time clock and get a sense of what this Mercury Pluto conjunction is all about first. So I can't help but notice that this Mercury-Pluto conjunction is happening at the same time that you're going to see Mars moving on to that critical 29th degree. This is important because when you see two things happening simultaneously, exact moments happening simultaneously, even if they're not, those two different events in the sky are not linked to one another by a direct aspectual connection, if there, there are usually other layers of connection or resonance that the two things will share and you sort of have to look for it or find it because it's always a clue when two things happen in the sky at once. Like, okay, Mercury's conjoining with Pluto at the exact same time that Mars is entering that critical 29th degree. Now, let's try to pair them together simultaneously. Mercury and Pluto together. I'm going to write some things out. People have said that they like when I do this. So let's just put Mercury plus Pluto. Whoops. Pluto. <clears throat> so you have uh, a catharsis, always a Plutonian word, of communication. And what I mean by that is you have some kind of shocking news or speech or information, something that's revealed or shared or shown that was hidden or that was repressed or Usually there's a kind of a moment where the messenger Mercury reveals something of great hidden power or of great potency or depth, sometimes quite intense and game changing somehow. So the, the, and this can also be some kind of outburst, uh, a moment of um, speaking something that's been pent up or also the ways in which people may use communication to try to dominate or to overpower others. One of the more intense significations of Pluto is the obsession with power. And so when Mercury conjoins with Pluto, sometimes people will use, you know, information or technology or like legal um, maneuvering or something like that to like overpower someone like I'm going to take all of your money or take your kids or not give you custody or, you know, it's like, like, people will sort of find that strategic loophole that's like kind of unfair Machiavellian power trip. That's a very Mercury-Pluto kind of combination uh, at its worst. At its best, Mercury-Pluto is like that, that, that revelation of something that's been hidden or unseen that comes to the surface, that disclosure of information or that epiphany. But usually there's a connotation of a purgation, something that has to come out or something that has to be revealed that maybe it was sick or festering somewhere. So you get a bit of that with Mercury-Pluto. On the other hand, you also have 
Mercury is the ruler of commerce and uh, the mercantile class and things like that can pertain to dramatic uh, new inventions or technologies uh, that have something to do with money or marketing. So like, I wouldn't be surprised to see big news in the tech world or something happening around cryptocurrencies. I mean, crypto, even that word, it feels very Plutonian. So you could also see almost like um, a, a, a temporary moment of empowerment around like money, trade, commerce, or some, some really uh, game-changing uh, revelation around the stock market or something like that. Those things kind of can happen when Mercury and Pluto get together. Let's see. Mercury and Pluto can also be um, deception uh, because Hades, of course, Pluto is related to the underworld to a place that's invisible. When Mercury goes into that underworld, there is often, um, you know, an, an invisibility that that Mercury has. Mercury goes under the beams of the sun, changing from evening star to morning star, morning star to evening star. You'll get that feeling of Mercury cloaking or hiding something or of there being um, a, a level of deception or manipulation behind the scenes or something like that. Anything that's sort of covert, and it could be covert in a good way, like planning something very quietly, um, biding your time, waiting for the right moment to take action, and then suddenly it, you, you make your move. Like that's a very Mercury-Pluto moment, especially because right now Mercury's in the process of emerging as the evening star. It's not yet in the process of becoming visible as the evening star. So something is about to be made visible, is about to be shown. Uh, the cards in your hand, you might be, um, you know, revealing what they are. You know, like the end of a poker game where someone says, all right, this is see, this is what I've got. And everyone goes, oh, you know, it's like that. So, so these are some things from Mercury and Pluto. Now, um, there's probably some other things. So I would love to hear your comments in the chat box. What else do you see with Mercury, Pluto? What other kinds of archetypal combinations um, could we add to this list? Now, secondly, we look at Mars at that critical degree of Aries and we go, okay, um, Mars is going to reach the critical degree. What is the critical degree? I hope I'm spelling that right. I believe I am, but uh, anoretic degree it means a killing degree. Uh, this, I, I don't actually know when the anoretic degrees became a thing. Uh, I think it's a more modern development. I, I have to go back and look because it's been a while since I've looked that up. But one thing that sort of corroborates the importance of an anoretic degree, even if it doesn't have a, a long history, which again, I have to check on, is the fact that in ancient astrology, the bounds, uh, the bound rulers of the last degrees of every sign were Mars and Saturn, Mars or Saturn. So you have Mars right now, for example, let me just pull open my table, uh, in Saturn's degree. Um, so the, those last degrees of the signs, even in ancient astrology, they were associated with the malefic planet. So there's something about the end of the sign that's like um, a bit destructive, which makes sense in the cycle of life. You start with creation, you know, in spring, and you kind of come around to destruction in winter. So there's something natural about this, some completing or resolving energy, but it can be very critical and intense and can mark the, the beginning of some phase of destruction. Um, so completion slash destruction. What I've noticed for Mars at critical degrees, especially, is that you're going to get a much more like a Mars that's boiling over. So when you pair the anoretic Mars in Aries, right, with that Mercury-Pluto, Here's what I would watch for. I would watch for explosive communication, or let's put in let's put in some others. Um, combative or hostile thoughts, or um, you know, another one would be something that is aggressive but secretive, or underground. So that kind of idea of Mercury sort of working in an invisible way with a, with the eye for power, Mars could kind of um, be lumped in with that same quality and suggest some kind of aggressive power trip or the desire to do something very aggressively, um, you know, in, but maybe suddenly or to spring, like almost like, you know, a, a predator that lies in, in waiting and then jumps out on the rabbit or something like that. I know that's a little bit of a freaky image, but 
you have this idea of something that could be plotting or planning behind the scenes and then sort of jump out and, and you know, come, come across at least unexpectedly and somewhat with a, with a kind of confrontational energy behind it. Um, you also have the potential here for, um, what do I want to say? The, the mobilization of resources for some kind of very aggressive agenda. Okay, so the mobilization of resources is a very Mercury Pluto kind of thing. Like, let me let me plot and plan something, and then let me mobilize it and use it suddenly and dramatically as Mars hits that anoretic degree. This is also pairing, remember, with a Mars that's trending towards erratic, revolutionary, rebellious Uranus. So there's you know something here is is cooking and it's about to boil over. It's about to like make its appearance. You get that from Mercury coming into the um, into the morning, the evening star position, like Mercury is about to show itself. And then you have Mars who is uh, at this, at this critical moment of um, self-expression. It's expressed, it's going to express itself in some kind of culminating way, almost like Mars is about to be a full moon for a couple of days. So now all of this right now, I try to highlight things that you could get caught on, that you could stumble on because the answer to all this, people say, so what do I do? And the answer is always the same. Be your best self, be patient, be kind, be loving, be compassionate. Make sure you're practicing and taking care of yourself spiritually every day. Um, if you do those things and you're simply aware of these energies, at the very least, you're going to be less likely to be grabbed and pulled by them in a direction that is more combative or volatile or manipulative or deceptive or something like that. On the other hand, you in life, we're going to be pulled along by storylines because we're here to live because we're here to live storylines. So as you are, now that you know what some of those themes are, you can also walk with them more consciously, make sure that you're not, there could be definitely be a temptation to do something either in a rush or to make a power play or to, um, you know, to plot or scheme in a way that's maybe a little underhanded. Um, so the, you know, this is, and any one of us can get caught by it. And if you do, then, you know, it's, it's at least, you know, you have the astrology there to be like, okay, well, I just did that. You know, let me come back to my center and forgive myself and refresh, you know, start over. But another thing that's like also important is that you're going to see these energies in people around you, especially if you have friends who don't have some way of self-reflecting every day, taking care of themselves, taking care of their mind and body, letting their home their heart be a home to the indwelling spirit soul and source if people aren't aware of those things these kind of people can also impact you people that are more likely to be pulled along by the flow of material nature like those people might be your boss or it might be someone you work with or someone in your family or whatever and you can also have compassion for them like okay well i know that these pressures are mounting right now and um you know at the end of the day like we're 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 all just animals. We're all just cosmic animals running around trying to figure things out, right? So it helps to know these things. One thing that's also nice is that this Mars energy is getting a little bit of a buffer from Venus right now. You've got Venus in a superior trine and um, Venus will be moving. Venus, Mars is about to leave its home sign and be in Venus's sign. And then Venus is going to support Mars through a superior trine from Capricorn. So I feel like there, there's the potential to move through some dicey waters here with peace and tact and some degree of harmony um, there to support, but it might not come right away. You might have to be a little bit patient for it because you're going to see, well, just to show you, you're going to see it take just a little bit for Mars to change signs and then for Venus to follow. So here's Mars moving in on the 6th. And then you're going to see Venus popping into the into the seventh into, into the eighth. So it's not until it's like between the sixth and the eighth. There's, in my opinion, there's a potential volatility that's pretty strong, and it's going to continue around also around the topic of communication and communication dynamics, money, technology, things like that, um, because you've got Mercury coming into a square with Mars. So this is stuff we're going to unpack more as we as we go along, but. The, the first hint that we have of what's happening, what's about to happen and the tensions building, it all starts with Mercury's conjunction with Pluto. Now that conjunction with Pluto, by the way, 
you're going to see that it happens between today and tomorrow at the same time. So it's crossing over in the next 24 hours. And Mars is going to be in the anoretic degree um, all the way up until the 6th. So you have about two days right now where things are like a little bit dicey. And then all the way up until about the 8th when Mercury gets into the square with Mars um, at that point, you're starting to get a little bit more support from Venus, but then there's a lot of, from the, you know, that point in January to the end of January, there's a lot of energy coming around that Aquarius uh, Taurus axis. So anyway, we'll unpack the rest of that as we go. I hope that this has been helpful for you today. Remember that there will be, I will be having a few days off from content creation to um, tidy up after the Kickstarter. There's a lot of, um, uh, recordings that I'm finishing up that I'm sending out to people as rewards. I've gotten a number of emails from people asking, I really wanted to pick up such and such reward, like your astrology of 2021 or your sun or rising sign horoscope for 2021. Can we still do that? I'm happy to still do that for people if they want to donate at the same reward tier that people wanted to. Um, if you want to do something like that, uh, or even uh, for maybe for one week, I'll extend any of the Kickstarter deals for for one week since I know some people were waiting to get paid or they they forgot or something like that. So uh, if that's you, you know, through the end of this week, I'll honor the Kickstarter rewards if you still wanted to pick one um, up just to make sure that, you know, some people who for whatever reason forgot or couldn't make it, um, you know, to that that last moment, if they want to pick up a 2021 video or something like that, just email me info at nightlightastrology.com. Uh, so um, have a very good 2021, um, everybody. It's it's good to uh, start off a new year together. The drama's cooking already, so it, it should be interesting. Um, so I look forward to more later this week. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye.